to be teaching uh, Wednesday night. Um, and I'm really glad that you all joined. Um, I think um, we've all practiced together before, so for the most part, you know what's up. If you have your broth blocks and props handy, that'd be great. You don't have to go scrambling. Um, if you want me to see your practice and help guide you personally, then set the camera up so I can see all of you. Um, and for now, we can just start, there's a few more people trickling in, but we can start um, in our own way, doing what we need to do to get grounded and balanced and settled. And So, I just, like a literally an hour and a half ago, um, wrapped up another 200 hour teacher training um, at Karma. We did an intensive in July, so Monday to Friday, eight to six, I did about half of it, as well as the weekend version that we've got going on, and some of you are in that. Um, and then the Sunday morning teaching, and. So my July, never mind kids and family life and, and, and all that balance, but my, my July has really been filled with um, a lot of yoga. And it's, I've learned a lot. And one of the things that I've learned or, or had reaffirmed or sunk a little bit deeper was how everyone has their own unique path, like really do. And I mean, we know we should teach people to fish instead of giving them the fish, that type of stuff. So more and more and more, I'm realizing the need to encourage and hold space for people to simply do the work. Um, and for me, it, it really does, um, Maybe it doesn't start with anymore, maybe it starts more with the yamas and the yamas, but the asana is so important, the asana and the pranayama. Um, so I'm, I, I love being able to, I mean, the teacher trainings are great, but to come into this space um, and, and really just lead asana and pranayama um, has me really excited and lit up. Um, and I'm stoked that Cecily's here to demo for us. Um, so she'll be in the back in a minute. So if you need to see what's happening, um, she'll be on her mat. Otherwise, here we go, yeah? Grounded, balanced, centered. Whatever you need to do f to get from where you are to there. Maybe you're there already. So just keep diving deeper. And if you need to roll or wiggle or shift in any way, um, do that. Grounded, balanced, centered. Right? Collect your awareness back from the future, forward from the past, into your space, onto your mat. And even, even away from me a little bit, turn inward. Connect your awareness to your body, and all the subtle layers that it carries. So the heart, the mind, the spirit. And just take a few moments to listen. To feel. cultivate a breath that's sort of going deeper and deeper and deeper until you find a deep, sustainable rhythm. Right? So a pattern of breath that you can maintain that will guide you through your work in your space. And when we have these regular practices, that we're committed to, that we come, we come to regularly, we might not even see the progress anymore, or see the shift, or see the evolution, or see the transformation. Every 
every once in a while it's good to reflect and see where you were. Cecily just wrote a blog on, on what she wished she'd known 20 years ago or what she didn't know and now she knows. Just the fact that you're here, that you're engaged, that you're open, that you're available, that you're committed, just that might be a huge shift for you. Never mind the physical and the emotional and the psychological benefits and the shift. doing the work. If you're inclined, maybe that means the hands come together. The thumbs towards the center of the chest, lift to meet them, drop your chin a little bit deeper. Maybe you can take a moment to acknowledge how far you've come, where you've been, your own personal growth. Appreciate that, acknowledge that, grateful to yourself and anyone else who's helped you along the way. And what's the work like today? Like what are we working on now? Might be the body, might be more subtle. All of it's worth your attention. So maybe take all that and set it as intention. If you're inclined, turn to the God of your own understanding and frame it as prayer. And then again, maybe acknowledging the support, the good company that we have, that we're in. And we can go about the business of walking each other home. We'll continue with the sound of three ohms. Exhale completely, go all the way to empty. Take a unified breath, so a full breath in together. A pause, a complete breath out together, all the way to empty, maybe pause again. When you're ready, inhale three on. those vibrations do their thing, right? Maybe you release your hands in just a few more moments here. However much time you need to turn on that ujjayi breath, to turn to that pranayama technique that guides our vinyasa, right? Again, the abdomen expanding and contracting, the diaphragm drawing down and doming up, right? Going all the way to full so you really expand and lift and lengthen up through spine out through the rib cage and then going the other way as you exhale spiraling inwards and down all the way to the bottom all the way to empty pause there too for most of us unless you're working nights it's towards the end of the day we've had a day hopefully I imagine where you are it's hot so maybe the body's already awake already alive but if you need to move if you need to wake the body up or check in with something, do that. Otherwise, we're moving towards a downward facing dog. Right? And that might take time. It might mean child's pose, cat, cow, right? a little bit of a twist or an inquiry. Whatever you need to do to get towards that downward facing dog. And again, if you're ready, if you're lit up, if you're turned on, right, go right to the shape, right? Don't pass 
go, don't collect $200, go directly to Downward Facing Dog. And if you need to go through the checklist, we're pressing the inner hand down so the weight's balanced in the hand, outer wrist is lighter. Maybe soften the knees to make sure the arms are straight and gripped and strong and supportive. And then from that connection, we lengthen through the spine, lengthen up through the tail, pushing the front of the mat away from us, getting our hips as far from the wrist as we can. Right, we get all that. And then once you've found a measure of that, working down through into the legs as you need. And again, if you don't need to dance, don't dance, right? Legs are straight, they're strong, the heels are pressing evenly, and we breathe. Right? Looks like we've all kind of gotten there. Now that we're there, just be here. Right? If you need to come out, I might keep you here longer. If you're here, if you need to come out, you come out. Because right? you need to, you address something, whether that's rest or a reset or a shift, and then maybe you come back. And throughout the practice, the down dog can, of course, look suspiciously like a child's pose. Otherwise, we're still here, pushing the front of the mat away from us, lengthen. Right? Ener Ryan said a couple weeks ago, electrify your spine. Yeah, draw the energy, the full length of that spine. Lift the hips higher, drop the head, lengthen, and open the spaces between the discs. Just the light of your awareness, just thinking about the spine, visualizing the spine, tuning into it, sends energy there. How about five more breaths? And maybe we get to a point in our practice where that me saying five more breaths and down dog doesn't freak you out. And if it does, it probably means you need to practice more. Call that two, how about three more breaths? Maybe one more. And if you're resting, join us when you're ready, all the way to empty. On empty, soften your knees, look forward, step, walk, scurry, float, both feet top of the mat. And as you arrive, there's a natural lengthening, and then you fold. And just play with that maybe a few times. Use the inhale to lengthen the spine forward, strong legs, be full, wait for the exhale, and fold. You can do that a few more times maybe. And you can stay in that halfway lift, you can stay in the fold, you can walk it out, you can swing around, whatever's appropriate. A couple more breaths. way out. How about one more? Exhale completely. And then in your way, with your breath or two of them, we're going to come all the way up to standing. So you can reach out and circle up, or you can roll up through the spine, or maybe you just stand up. Right? We'll meet in Tadasana Mountain Pose, Samastita He equal standing, feet pressing evenly, legs strong, spine long, shoulders broad, chin humbled to a lifted, open heart. Perfect. We'll move, we'll go through those Surya Namaskar, some salutations, we'll link them all together a little bit, follow your breath, drop deeper, the deeper you go, the higher we all get. Exhale completely here, go to empty. Next inhale, follow it all the way up. Circle the arms out and overhead. Reach up, look up, strong and long. Keep them both. Exhale and fold forward, dive. Whatever you need to get the hands to the floor, the lungs empty and the head released. Inhale, lengthen forward to plant the hands, to step or hop back, lowering as you exhale halfway or all the way. Wait for the inhale to lengthen, lift the front body, be there at full for a moment, 
And as you exhale, slide back, lift the hips, downward facing dog. Just one breath. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale to ground. Soften the knees as you inhale, step or float. Lengthen as you rise. Be there. Fold as you exhale. Go all the way to empty. And then wait for your inhale to rise. Heart forward, arms out. Reach out, reach up. And as you exhale, we're going to dive forward. We'll link them together. So diving forward, pouring the breath out, yourself out over the leg. Inhale to shift the weight forward to the hands. Travel, step, walk, or float. And as you exhale, lower halfway or all the way. Wait for the inhale to lengthen. Lift the front body, be there. Your exhale will guide you all the way back down dog. Again, one breath here. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, ground. On empty, soften the knees. Look forward as you inhale, travel. Step or float. Lengthen as you arrive. Same inhale. Fold as you exhale. Don't rush. Be empty for a moment. Your inhale, you rise. Arms out. Overhead, reach up. Stretch up. Keep the strength and the length and dive forward as you exhale all the way out and down. Inhale to shift. Plant the hands, step or float, lower halfway or all the way. Right? Lengthen, lift, open up. Exhale all the way back, downward facing dog. One breath. Yeah? But your rhythm, if you're ahead or behind me, that's cool. Just move through the body with the breath. Exhale completely here. On empty, soften, look forward as you inhale, travel, step or float. Lengthen as you arrive. Fold as you exhale. Inhale, rise. Reach out, reach up. We'll do that like that one more time. As you exhale, fold forward again. Inhale, prepare. Weight to the hands. Step or float. Lower halfway or all the way. Front lengthening, back bending. Don't rush. Go all the way to full. Lift up more. Fill up more. Be there. And then your exhale guides you back downward facing. One breath here, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, ground. Soften the knees, look forward as you inhale, travel, step or float. Lengthen as you arrive, same breath. Fold as you exhale to empty. Inhale to rise, reach out, reach up, stretch here. And this time we stand tall, release the arms, the chin, the breath. But keep the legs strong, the ribs lifted, the focus. Take a few breaths here. Following the breath. Finding the heartbeat. Aware of the conversation, but not in it. Just fall back behind the storytelling that's going on. Beautiful. Exhale completely here. Take one more breath here together. Full breath in. Complete breath out. Feet together maybe. Bend the knees, squeeze them together, sit down. As you inhale, reach the arms. Utkatasana, sit in that chair. And as you exhale, straighten the legs and fold forward. Inhale to lengthen, weight to the hands, step or float. You can skip the push-ups anytime. Add in extras if you need. Inhale, lengthen, lift. Exhale all the way back, down dog. And we're going to play with this second version a little bit. So your next inhale to lift the right leg up and back. And then just stay here for a breath or two to lengthen or just to hang on for dear life or maybe to open. You could bend the knee and circle the leg, whatever you need to do to tune into the hip. Right? Come back to center. Inhale, lengthen. And then as you exhale, rocking forward, knee towards the face, the nose or the forehead. Inhale, lift up and back again, lengthen. Exhale, knee to nose, squeeze in. We'll do that again. Inhale, lengthen, full. Wait for the exhale, squeeze in. Now stay here, one breath. Inhale, puff up. Exhale, squeeze it all out, the knee in. Then look forward, step the right foot to the right thumb. Turn the left heel in, so the back foot's at an angle. We're lunged, we're squaring the hips. 
Inhale, we build up that warrior one pose. There's no rush. We'll stay for a few breaths. Feet planted, back leg strong. Right hip drawing back, left hip rolling forward. Spine lifting, shoulders lifting, arms stretching, maybe looking up. Right? Whatever your pose needs to look like tonight. A few more breaths here. Exhale completely. Inhale from the feet, stretch right up through the arms, out through the fingertips. Exhale, keep that length and just squeeze the breath out. One more breath here, full pose, full breath in. Complete breath out. Now as you inhale, palms together, thumbs to heart. Spot your landing, so use your gaze out in front of you to help with balance. Lift the back heel, and as gracefully as possible, tip forward and lift the back leg, right? So towards this balance pose, this warrior three. And you might just be working with the right ankle, so everything stays sort of pulled in. Once the dance is clear in the ankle, find strength in the right leg, Maybe lift the left heel higher, keep the heart lifted, drop the left hip. Any arm variations, reach back, reach forward, reach out. There you go, one more breath here. Full breath in. Complete breath out. And now as you inhale, soften the right knee, step the left foot way back. Hands down, step the right foot back. And as you exhale, do your push up or go straight to down dog, yogi's choice the lower halfway or all the way, yeah, or go straight to down dog or child's pose. What do you need? Open up, press back. We'll take three breaths in down dog this time. Or you're resting, or you're inquiring. Yeah, what do you need? Exhale completely every time. Maybe one more breath here. Join us when you're ready, full breath in. Complete breath in. Other side, same inquiry with the left leg. Inhale, lift it up and back. And you can stay just like this, working on balance, on strength, or you can open the hips and bend the knee and circle the hip around. Okay. Little inquiry here, another breath maybe. There you go, and then come back to center. Inhale to lengthen, press the front of the mat away from you, and as you exhale, we're drawing the knee towards the face, the, knee, the forehead or the nose. Inhale, lift up and back again, lengthen. Again, squeezing, drawing the breath the knee in, the breath out. One more time, up and back, inhale. As you exhale, draw the knee in and stay for a breath. Inhale, puff up. Exhale, squeeze out. Looking forward as you inhale, left foot to left thumb. Take the time with the right foot, turn the heel in, get grounded. Right leg strong, left leg lunged. Squaring the hips, inhaling, building the pose all the way up. So upright eventually. Right? And if the way is clear, you go. Right? Don't wait, we'll catch up. Right? Sometimes we need others ahead of us on the path. Right? So go. But if you're still working on the feet, work on the feet. There's no rush. Right leg is strong. Pelvis is leveling, so plug the tail in, draw the front ribs in, and lift the ribs, the shoulders, the arms, maybe even the gaze straight up. Right? Back leg strong. Lift the shoulders. Stretch the arms. Reach for the ceiling. Yeah. Couple more breaths. Exhale completely. From the strength and the foundation up through the stretch and the side body, arms, inhale, reach, exhale, stay. One more breath, full breath in. Complete breath out. And then as you inhale, draw the thumbs to center the chest. Lift the back heel, looking forward, use your gaze for balance. Lift the back leg and float. Or maybe wave your arms around to find right, where you are in space. Clear in the ankle, strong in the left leg. Lift the right heel, keep the heart lifted. Drop the right hip. Right, reach back, reach out, reach forward. What do you need? There you go, nice catch through this. One more breath here, full breath in. Complete breath out. Nice and smooth as you inhale. Soften that front knee, step the right foot way back. Plant the hand, step the left foot back. And you do you, lower halfway or all the way, or go straight to down dog. 
We'll meet there. Three breaths once you find that downward facing dog. Two more. Still as committed to the work as ever. Keep coming back again and again and again and again. Exhale completely here. Join us when you're ready. Soften the knees. Look forward as you inhale. Step or float. Top of the mat. Lengthen as you arrive. Fold as you exhale. Feet together. Bend the knees. Drop the hips. Inhale. Reach up. Utkatasana. Exhale, straighten the legs, release the arms, the chin, the breath, stand tall. And it's all happening. We've created this beautiful momentum. And the steps just get clearer and clearer and clearer from here. Eventually we understand that the direction of those steps, the direction of that momentum is inwards. Ride the effort deeper and deeper and deeper. Beautiful. From the top of your mat, we're going to take a big step with the right foot to face the side. Take a nice wide stance. We're going to turn the left toes in and the right toes out. Both feet planted, both legs straight and strong, the hips open to the side. The ribs lifted, float the arms to shoulder height. Yeah, if you need to move around so you can see the screen better, do that. Looking out over the left fingers, as you inhale, reach out along that strong left leg at your edge. Taking left hand to left leg, maybe the right hand starts on the hip, or maybe you reach straight up. Utita Trikonasana, triangle pose. Yeah, feet planted. Tim, I would turn your left foot out even more. Point it toward, yeah, point toward the end of the mat. Both legs strong, spine long, tipping back, breathing. A lot of us could do with coming a little bit higher and pushing the hips forward and leaning back. Yeah, perfect. And lean back so it becomes a balanced pose and a side stretch. Yeah? So it's not a forward fold. Beautiful. And then use that top shoulder blade to turn the chest towards the ceiling. Okay? Left shoulder rolls too. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Couple more breaths here. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale to rotate. One more breath. Full breath in. Patient breath out. Look down, grounded. Use the inhale to come all the way up. You can release the arms or keep them as you switch the feet. Right toes in, left toes out. Okay? Plant the feet, legs are strong, get the arms back. Now we're looking out over the left fingers. As you inhale, reach out long along that left leg, right? And at your edge, don't tip forward, just tip to the left, right? So stay, you might not go to the, the hand might not come to the floor or even the ankle or the shin. It might be just below the knee. But you can push the hips forward and lean back into the same plane as that right leg. And by right leg, I mean left leg. Feet, the inquiry might be there. Legs. Strengthening them, clearing them, maybe there's your work. Through the spine, keeping that awareness, rolling both shoulders, using the top shoulder blade to turn the chest, and then keeping that action, maybe reaching that top arm up. Whatever it is, breathe, breathe, breathe. Three more breaths here. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale to deepen. Two more. All the way in. One more breath here. Full breath in. Patiently empty the lungs. Look down, grounded. As you inhale, nice and strong, come all the way up. This time the hands come to the hips as we turn the left toes in. Right? And some of you have been coming to my classes, these Zoom classes especially, every week. And we do the same poses. I don't know. In almost 20 years, these are the ones that I think are most important. So we do them and do them and do them and come back to them again and again and again. Toes turned in a little bit. Feet nice and wide, legs strong, hands to hips. Inhale, lift the front line of the body. 
And as you exhale, we're folding forward. Right? And about halfway down, maybe you can release your hands to the floor. If you can't reach the floor, take your feet wider. And if you still can't reach the floor, take your feet wider again. Right? If you still can't reach the floor, a couple blocks would work, a chair would work, a stack of books would work. Take the time to shift the weight forward so the seat's in line with the heels. Maybe even lengthen out of the fold a little bit to really get the legs online. They're straight, they're strong, the kneecaps are lifted, those joints are stable now. So we can keep them like that and use them to draw ourselves deeper into the fold. And as always, if the way is clear, you go. If you need to pulse up and down, you do that. Anywhere you encounter resistance or tension or feedback, you listen. You breathe and you listen. Listen and you breathe. Just know that as your awareness goes to the shoulders or to the spine, that maybe you drop the knees or collapse the feet. So come back to the legs and the foundation and then the spine again. Or if you focus on the legs, maybe you forgot about the breath. And the day will come, maybe it's today, where it all just gets put together. And you find these really sweet spots of integration, of absorption, of clarity, of freedom. that yoga. A couple more breaths here to lengthen as you inhale, deepen as you exhale. One more breath at least. More if you need. Otherwise, inhale to lengthen forward. What we're going to do from here is walk the hands to the right foot. And as you do that, turn the right toes out. So point the toes towards you in the mat and lift the left heel. Drop the left knee, lunging into the right leg. There. A moment here to get grounded. Cushion the left knee if you need. What we'll do next is bring both hands up to the right thigh. So come upright. Maybe you can push back a little bit so the Lunge is shorter and the spine is upright, pelvis is level. Find balance, bring the palms together, thumbs to the heart. We're gonna twist this lunge. So as you inhale, reach the chest forward, and as you exhale, take left elbow outside right knee. Take a moment to really get that connection. Lift the chest again and draw the right hip back. Inhale, lengthen, and as you exhale, push right hand to left to twist deeper. You can stay just like this, back off if you need, or maybe tuck the left toes under and lift the left knee up. Right? Fire that lunge up a little bit. There you go. You might open the arms, there might be a bind, might be an arm balance. You do use three breaths here. Use them. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale to deepen. Two more breaths. All the way out. Go to full and don't rush. Pause there. Exhale completely, and then release it. Break the pose with an inhale. Look down, hands down, walk back to center. So lift the left knee if you need to, turn the left heel in, walk the hands back to the middle, turn the right toes. And just take a few moments there if you need to, to move or roll or inquire. And when you're ready, we're going the other way. So walk the hands to the left foot. Turn the left toes out, lift the right heel, drop the right knee. Take a moment, and when you're ready, walk the hands up to the thigh. Maybe draw that foot back a bit to level the pelvis, to lengthen the spine. Grounded, balanced, palms together, thumbs to heart. Inhale, reach the heart forward. Exhale, right elbow outside, left knee. Right? Take your time here. Right? Roll the shoulders, draw the left hip back, lift the heart. Inhale, and as you exhale, now we're pushing left hand into right, to twist deeper. And yeah, you go. If you want to fire that lunge up, lift the back knee, you're welcome to it. If you need to back off a little bit, do that as well. Use the breath. Three more of them here. Two more. 
stay with it to empty. At least one more breath. You can stay longer. All the way out. Right? And break it with an inhale. Look down as you inhale, hands down. We're going to walk back to center again. So lift the right knee, turn the feet, walk the hands. And we'll go back into that fold. Right? And we've got maybe four or five breaths, any version of it. Arms behind you, grab the ankles, take the head down and the feet up. You can play a bit. What do you need in your practice today? Three more breaths here. Strong legs. Long spine. One more breath. All the way out. Stay longer if you need. Join us when you're ready. Inhale to lengthen. Right? From here, we're going to heel toe the feet in until they're about as wide as the hips. Turn the toes out and squat straight down. Right? If there's limitations here, right, you can sit onto something. You can sit right to the floor. Right? If the heels stay lifted, maybe keep the hands grounded. Right? Find the right width for the feet. Breathe. And this can be a really grounded, contained, turned inward kind of space. So you can drop the hands and the head. Or maybe it's elbows to inner knees. Palms together, thumbs to heart, long lifted spine. More breaths here. Be one more. Real simple from here. From the squat, simply take the seat to the floor. The hands can come behind you if you need. And just take a moment, draw the feet and the knees together, wrap your arms around your legs, give yourself a little squeeze here. And then if you haven't already, we're just going to spin to face the top of the mat again. So turn the feet to the top of the mat and extend the legs for a moment. Yeah. And we'll go right into that. Janu Shirshasana or head to knee pose. So we'll bend the right leg and bring the sole of the right foot to the inner left leg. It might be the knee, it might be the thigh, it might be right up into the groin. Right? Sit up on a block or a blanket if you need to support the tip of the pelvis. Take the time to turn the torso over the left leg. So maybe the hands are on the floor. Right? To turn you a little bit. Inhale to lift. And if you exhale, maybe walk the hands towards the left foot, folding over the left leg. Maybe you catch the shin or the ankle or the foot. Whatever you catch, maybe take a moment to lengthen first. And then an exhale will maybe fold you deeper. My knee, my right knee, has a bit of an injury in it. So I often take one of my blocks and just place it under the right knee. Right? For a little bit of support if it's really floating high up in the sky, up in the air. A few more breaths here. Each of the inhales is to find a bit more length, and the exhales are to roll a little bit deeper. Janu Shirshasana, head to knee pose. So eventually we are curling in and dropping the head towards the knee. A couple more breaths here. All the way empty. One more. Exhale. Inhale to release the bind and walk the hands back up towards you. A bit of a counter pose here. We're going to take the right hand out behind the right hip. Maybe open that right knee out a little bit, pushing down into the right hand, into the left heel and the right shin. We're going to lift the hips. Lengthen that left side body, open the hip flexor, maybe reach the left arm overhead and get this nice long stretch to the left side body. 
right? a breath or two here. You can even cup the back of the head for support if you like. Right? Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, stay. And then as you inhale, nice and easy, release the seat back down. Turn forward again. Extend the right leg. And draw the left knee in. Take the left foot, the sole of the left foot, to the shin or the knee or the inner thigh and drop the left knee out. Again, a pillow or a cushion if that knee is way up in the air. Take a moment to turn over that right leg, so maybe use the hands to turn the torso. Even exaggerate that turn to come back to center. And then when you're ready, walking the hands out towards the right foot, you catch the shin or the ankle, use a strap or a shirt over the right foot, or you catch the toe mat. Inhale, find length. Exhale, draw deeper. And just keep riding that breath. Inhale to expand and lengthen. Exhale to roll deeper toward that right leg. Three more breaths here. And all the way there. Two more. left hand out diagonally behind you from that left hip. Push into the hand, the left knee, the right foot. Lift the hips up and maybe reach that right arm over. You can play with it. You can drop down and lift up again. Right, Reach the arm or catch the back of the head. Right, Find length and brightness through the right side of the body. Perfect. One more breath here. Full breath in. Complete breath out. And then use an inhale to come back, drop the seat, extend the left leg forward, and just take a moment here, right? If you need to wiggle a little bit or pedal the feet, that works for me. Okay. And then we have choice. We're going to slide the hands back behind us, right? Point the fingers towards the seat. You can bend the legs and bring the feet to the floor like Seth did, or keep the legs straight. Exhale completely here. And as you inhale, we're going to lift the hips. So push into the feet, into the hands. Lift the hips and stay. Three breaths. Right? So maybe you back off a little bit as you inhale. And as you exhale, lift even higher. Two more breaths. Higher hips. Yeah, you go a little bit more. One more breath here. How high can you get? Stay as you exhale. And as you inhale, lower back down. If the legs are straight, maybe you bend them a little bit, bring the feet to the floor. You can keep the hands behind you for support or catch the back of the thighs. Lean back, find that sweet spot in the seat, roll the shoulders, eventually you float the feet. So yeah, this can be done with the hands behind you, or you catch the back of the thighs, or maybe reach the arms forward, right? So you just lift the feet a bit, you can lift them a little bit more, right? Or you can lift them all the way. A few more breaths here, Navasana Boat Pose. Inhale, lift it. Exhale, hold it, stay. Two more breaths, inhale a little bit higher maybe. Exhale, stay. One more breath. All the way out. And then nice and slow as you inhale, lengthen and lower. So get longer and find this low boat. So the heels, the feet, the shoulders are hovering. Right? You do you, you can drop if you need. Otherwise, stay a little bit longer. Right? And then when you're ready, it might be nice just to let it all go. Beautiful. You don't have a lot of work. If you're good, right, you're welcome to stay in this Shavasana. Otherwise, we keep going. So when you're ready, We'll bend the knees carefully, draw them in towards the chest, give ourselves a hug, a squeeze, a little rock, a little roll. We're going to move into a back bending practice. So as always, if the way is clear, you go. If you want to go all the way up to that big upward facing bow, you're welcome to at any time. 
I'm gonna speak to the bridge though. Any other back bend, for that matter, any other shape that you need at this point, I'm okay with. Feet to the floor, arms beside you, head straight at all times. Exhale completely here. Right? And as you inhale, nice and slow, peel the spine up off the floor, lift, lift, lift. And then as you exhale, don't lower all the way back down, but drop a little bit and roll the groin in. And then inhale, lift again, and lift even higher. And then this time as you exhale, maybe just lower about halfway. Just release the seat, roll the thighs, drop a little. Inhale, lift even higher. And then this time, just release a little bit, just an inch or two. And then inhale, lift to that highest place. And you can stay with that kind of inquiry if it was serving you. Otherwise, get lifted, stay lifted. Feet planted, shoulders grounded. Maybe roll the shoulders a bit deeper. The fingers might lace together underneath you. Right? And if the wrists are good, mindful there, you could bend the elbows and catch the hips. You could also catch the ankles, right? Or take a block under the sacrum. Any variations or modifications um, that are appropriate, please get involved. And if you want to fire it up, plant the hands by the ears and go all the way. Now's your chance. Find a shape, though, that you can stay in. So once you've come to this inquiry and you've shifted and listened, maybe land in a shape or come back to a shape that you can take, I want to say 10 breaths, but I also want to be nice today. So maybe it's just five breaths. Just keep doing the work. Allowing that pulse. two or three more breaths. You're welcome to come out, come back in, whatever you need. One more breath. All the way empty, really squeeze the breath out. And then as you inhale, release the arms, the shoulders, roll the spine carefully back down. It might be nice to just slide the feet a little bit further away, an inch or two, a little bit wider towards the edge of the mat, and drop the knees in to touch each other. This really allows the lower back to land, and all that compression that you created in the lower back to release. Pose is still happening until the breath is back, the heart rate is settled, the lower back is released, you're still in the back bend. Awesome. It might be nice from here if you need to move anything or reset in any way, maybe just wiping the knees from side to side. Taking them both one way and then back to center and the other way. You go back and forth a few times if you want to stay in another twist. Right? You can, next time you come to the right, you can stay. If you're not going to stay in the twist, I'm going to invite you to get upside down. So take your legs up in the air. Could be as simple as just sticking your legs up in the air with your hands or a blanket or a cushion to support the hips. You can even come to the wall and put your legs up the wall. And if you have that shoulder stand practice or a headstand practice that you want to get in, now is your chance. There, keep breathing. And if you're in that shoulder stand, Work your way into a shape that you can maintain steady, right? where you're not overworking, where you can still breathe deep and find a measure of relaxation. Amazing. And stay, in, I mean, if, if you're in a comfortable spot in the shoulder stand, 
our teachers, Ryan from Ramaswamy from Krishnacharya, talk about staying in these shapes, 5, 10, 15 minutes. So if you want to keep going with your practice as we're nearing our 60 minute mark, you're welcome to stay in the shoulder stand and keep going with the asana and add in the pranayama. Otherwise, maybe two or three more breaths in shoulder stands. Acro yoga with the littles is always welcome. There we go. From shoulder stand, you might move into and stay, or just simply move through halasana or plow. If you've done either of those shapes, you'll want to open the chest and the throat with that fish pose or flip over for a little low back bend. If you've twisted one way, you want to twist the other. And then maybe a step or two or three from Shavasana what do you need? Right? A little more movement, another shape or two. Just to be right where you are. When you're ready, you'll find us flat on our backs. Feet wide. Arms wide. Wide enough that you can release the hip, you can release the shoulders, and you can relax the arms and the legs. Palms soften, soles of the feet soften and melt. Let gravity take the spine right up to the head, let the head heavier, supportive, relax the neck, the jaw, unfurl the brow, release even the breath, let the breath go.
got nothing planned for six o'clock, then by all means stay. Stay until you're complete. If and when you're ready, come back to the breath. A little bit of movement, the fingers, the toes, the wrists, the ankles. Arms, stretch the legs, inhale in, reach and stretch, stretch, and let go. Maybe you carefully draw the knees in for one more little squeeze. Mindfully roll to the side, maybe the right for a moment or two. time, push down to come all the way back up. Maybe we just find a seat here together for a few more moments. Grounded, balanced, centered. Find those deep waves again. Opening the lines of communication all the way. until we realize that we're already there. Submitting to this practice, this daily, regular practice, without concern for outcome. Let's simply get you there quicker. I've yet to see it fail, and I've been watching. Maybe the hands come back together, the thumbs back to the center of the chest. And we like to close in gratitude. We like to close with gratitude for maybe just a simple thing. Having the little ones around to join us when we practice. Having our partners in the space with us to share these. benefits. Me, I'm grateful for you as always. I appreciate your efforts. I can't explain how much I learn by guiding and teaching. So until next time, thank you. really so great to see all of you. Um, Wednesdays at 5, Sundays at 10, we'll both be here. And I can't wait to see you again. Have a wonderful evening. Right. Yeah, you're Thank welcome, you. Tim. Pleasure as always. Bye, Tim. Nice to see you, Michelle.